Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another tournament series from the Global Championships. This is the week number one matchup between Lucas L versus Minimalt. This is the first series between these two players in, in the group stages, so both players meet in here. Lucas, the top seed in this group versus Mini, the bottom seed. Hashtag, don't quote me on that. I want to quickly check just for... Uh, is it? I actually want to check this because I've, I'm, again... Lucas, oh, it's C2, C3. Fuck's sake. Samwise and Sven, Samwise dropped out. Yeah, that's a good talking point to chuck in it as well. Hm. Oh, well. Sven. Sven is the other one, isn't it? Sven is the other one. Sven. Sven Goran Eriksson, the football manager. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another casted tournament series on ESOC TV. Uh, my name is Harrison. This is the week number one match in Group B between Lucas and Minimalt. Minimalt, of course, uh, being the second seed. Lucas being the third seed. Uh, both these players are very closely rated. They might actually be the other, other way around. So Lucas being C2, Mini being C3. But uh, this is the first match between these two players. A very closely expected series. Uh, looking to have some good stuff. Uh, best of five. Um, New World Championship rules, all the normal stuff. And for game number one, we see a mini malt plane as the British civilization spawning into the southwest of the map on the map Florida in the color blue. And Lucas will be spawning into the northeast of the map in the color purple. Interesting color. Don't see much purple action going on playing as the Indians. The other players in this group are Sam Wise 12 and Sven. However, Sam Wise had to drop out from the tournament, citing personal reasons. So Sven has advanced to the upper bracket or the next stage of the group and will be playing the winner of either Mini Malt and Lucas. And then we'll go into the next week's games. Early trading post here for Mini Malt on the south side. Moving across, he scouted a 100 coin treasure here. Could be quite nice for Minimalt. I'm noticing he's only got 25 coin. One of these villagers here could chop one or two coin pieces on the top side. And that could be enough resources to buy 100 wood. Looking at his wood count. Eight wood available. Won't be too much there to chop to get another manor house. He does get his manor house down. The trading post is down before the first shipment. It's going to be a somewhat crucial shipment. But won't affect the speed of his first age shipment. Which is a little bit disappointing to see. But... When you spawn on the southern side of Florida, that's the best you can hope for. Meanwhile, let's have a look at Lucas' point of view. He's picking up the 75 wood in the middle of the map. Nice open treasure. He's got another enough of woods to to uh, was it create another two villagers here, going for distributors in behind this. When will he pull off the villagers from the woods onto the food? Has he got this calculated? I'm seeing one vill come off now. This is the Ford Agraville. Um, looks, looks to be reducing the amount of wood chopping here, so maybe looking for going to be a total of th 13, 14. I'm not going to lie, I don't know my Indian um, villager to uh, distributism to wood chopping ratios. And I think Lucas is having a, only a few villagers on the wood chopping just to allow the possibility of coming across another wood treasure and can ma maximize that. So, Ford Villager from the Agra. I would imagine will eventually throw down the aggro, but it's currently on herding duties right now. Just being a little bit forward. I would expect an aggro in this matchup. I don't think a Carney Martin in base will be the order of play here from Lucas. But who knows, he may have some ideas. Six sheep to his name. The sixth in the middle of the map. Very nice from Lucas. I did the maths. Looked at some numbers online. I think all the livestock gather roughly at the same rate. And here, 0 0.08 XP per second. So just a little bit worse than the others, but each sheep is roughly a tenth of a trading post if we're sending 0 0 0 0.1 XP per second. So maybe, let's see if Lucas had about 12 sheep, that could be the equivalent of a trading post. And with 12, he's kind of got six, and that's half a trading post worth of experience points in base. Uh, some nice early scouting there and nice pickups. Got the mid-map aggro. Oh, oh, oh. Minimog going to block it. I just... Just walking through, but certainly got himself an extra couple of seconds there from the aggro being dropped. Very, very nice to see. Meanwhile, a minimal back in base. Three Vills first card, as to expected. Calling in Virginia Company in transition. 
gang saw already from the starting market making good use of the starting um well, the, the starting marquee on this map, so having a strategy crafted specifically for this map is always good to see. Uh, looking at hunts nearby, double southern hunt. This hunt will be herded quite close. Uh, so two deer hunts to be herdable underneath the town centre. Uh, double back defensive gold mine, not the biggest deal for British players. The hunts are more interesting. A turkey hunt slightly to the east, but that should be under his control if he pushes out. But enough hunt, enough resources to play somewhat defensive for the time being. Hundred food being picked up by Minimal. Agra on its way being made. So Minimal is halfway up. Lucas is actually followed by quite a decent time as well, it has to be said. Um, given that the Agra has been built by one villager continuously, this takes, the last time I checked, 110 seconds to build. It's 120 with no villagers, so 110. I can't remember exactly when it goes down, but I'm expecting a 4 minute 48. Uh, no, that's, that's, be, that's be way too generous. 4 minute 45, 4 minute 50. With uh, mini malt behind, probably about the 4:35 area time. So, mini malt should have enough time to get his first shipment in. Not have to play super defensive. I'm expecting 700 wood, and then dropping the racks. Yeah, I think he can drop, drop racks on the 700 wood shipment there. Treasure contention, 40 wood. Who will get it? Oh, it's Lucas. Mini malt caught napping, but a 40 wood food swing there. Not the greatest of uh, treasure swings, but. I guess there's not much else to see at this point of the map. Would be a good opportunity to check the decks, though. So, 3 Vil Mana Virginia Company does have 5 Vil, 700 wood. Only one coin crate, no food crates there. Double musk shipment, double unit shipment as well. Two caravels instead of cav attack. Um, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a well-balanced deck. I'm not too sure how the 6 longbows work in a prolonged age 2 play versus India I suppose longbows will do somewhat well versus Gurkha but unfortunately versus a sepoy mass uh, longbows they not great sepoy is very high HP brick consulate as well behind it buffing up further we see a good mana wall here from Minimalt uh, this isn't to block the enemy and force them out this is just to keep eyes on the pesky enemy to see um, sepoy raids come in from earlier, giving a bit more advanced warning so that Mini can bring his villagers into the close proximity to the town centre to keep them nice and safe. Uh, one barracks thrown down before the 700 wood, and looks like a second rack's been thrown down on the 700 wood. So Mini Mock playing a little bit more defensive than I thought he would be at this moment in time. But you better be safe than sorry in a tournament game, and Mini Mock is exercising the utmost caution. From his Indian opponent. Oh, will he scout the consulate? Not quite. But he's moving down. He scouts the in base consulates. And this should give the mini malts the information of a potential, potential Ottoman consulate here. 300 export. Coming in and more of an economic play. Uh, usually, if we see the classic delayed consulate rush, that consulate will be placed forward oh, yeah. with this villager, building it down and allying with the British consulate for the forward red coat musketeers. But yeah, you can always have the concert behind. It doesn't take that long for the Musks to, to cross half the map. But Lucas is already going in with just these uh, 10 Sepoys. He's got 10 Sepoys. Where's the 12th? Uh, he hasn't completed this full batch of two fives. But, you know, obviously looking at this progression, never sent five Sepoys here. So, mid-map, just going for the slow, steady play here. Feigning a aggressive opening. Mini Mort's already responded with double barracks. So, so far, with, in terms of how the builds have gone... Yeah, I, f I feel a very small, very small slight advantage here for Lucas. Um, but minimal again, you could say getting away with the Virginia Company, not really too hassled here. Now, it'd be both players probably ha open and happy with how the openings have gone. Uh, ten sepoys in the base, though. No British consulate, so these will get two shot killed by the town centre. Only 81 uh, attacks, so nine villagers in the base. A uh, good minute in pop. And the sepoys returning, but... Yeah, Lucas, he's just lost himself two sepoys and another sepoy essentially worth of HP, but does force idle in time, forces Minutemen pop. And actually, crucially, less units to deal with when the Ottoman Hussars turn up. So I think that's actually, Lucas will be very happy with that early foray there. 
a bit of a musketeer raid, uh, giving Zati would be very proud of this tactical maneuver here from Minimalt. A couple of musks top side, uh, just pushing these three away. These villagers have to get into the town center, and actually, Minimalt knows that it's just enough units here to two to shot kill uh, a villager. So two volleys will kill another villager. Okay, here comes the Minutemen pop. These musks probably don't need to run away anymore. If they can try and sacrifice themselves for another villager, that would be a good pickup. Otherwise, I fear these have already gone to the grave. Ottoman Hussars out on the field, scouted there by Minimalt. So he knows the Ottoman attacks come in. Mini won't necessarily know that the export's been shipped. I believe it's probably a little bit too early in the game to get the Ottoman Hussars without the help of the 300 export shipment. So uh, Mini know the consulate shipment has been shipped, and that should allow the villagers to be tacked in behind at a later point. Itty bitty. Uh, some cast are saying, oh, I hate this sieve. Watched the other day, Sweden Mirror, and the dude said, this game, not great because I hate Sweden. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, everyone's had their opinion. It's quite, quite funny when they say um, uh, funny comments like that. But I like the British. I like the Indians to watch. I've never actually played a competitive game as the Indians. Uh, if anything, it's because I'm scared of the macro. Villagers cost him wood, a bit of food and coin, a slow eco tempo sieve, and if you don't get your timings right, like possibly here, Minimalt's got a large cohort of musketeers ready to defend. 22 musketeers, okay, there's six Minutemen, one HP, but that's tucked up so tightly within this unit formation, it's quite hard for Lucas to actually micro down. He's started to transition into a bit of Gurkhas, one explorer trying to get in the splash damage, but the Minutemen are quite far behind. And yeah, Lucas is trading some, just a little bit. Sepoys, 180 HP still. Yeah, in the town centre range, I would like to see 10 villagers into the town centre. When I mean, you've got a 45 eco um, chugging along behind, 10 villagers is very affordable here. And actually, at this moment, he's taken, starting to take a not an ideal military trade mini malt, especially with the reinforcement of Gurkhas behind. Double, malt, um, double attack versus musketeers and not retraining really longbows and oh my god miss this guys the age up here behind with the adventurer seven longbows really will need some sort of defensive town center fire to hold train more musketeers but the gurkhas here absolutely loving this get a couple shots off and kite back double kill down the musketeers chasing and just the trades here working quite well for lucas militarily where are those ottoman hussars i swear are they in somewhere or oh, they've been raiding on the south or I don't think they went in first. They're, they're, they've been on the backside raiding. <laughs> back, back door raiding, giggity. Um, <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> but I wonder where the Hussars are. I feel that if the Hussars were uh, keeping these Musketeers uh, really interested, like these Sowers have, the Gurkhas are behind just to clean up the Musketeer mass. And again, Musketeers, these are Gurkhas having no answers here from the Musketeers. Mini still on the back. He's training more musketeers, but there's enough Gurkhas here. A big batch of Sowers coming in. Uh, the musketeers are coming in a good place, actually. Right on top of the Gurkhas is quite nice. I think that should be enough to, to hold on to this initial push. Indian does have the market, because obviously you start on the market. Um, let's look at the villagers here quickly. Yeah, they have quite a lot of text. Silver Servants, second tier, hunting upgrade. Start off the woods already researched. Yeah, pretty good um, text, but I don't think the text here matters. We've got uh, more sours, but there's the big longbow pop. Lucas should know that longbows will pop up from the town center. A uh, Minimalt is very smart to not age up with the town center wagon, but it's rather unlucky for we've got anti archer cavalry right on top of the longbow mass. A couple of his units in hand combat, not doing a great amount of deal, and the seven longbows already reduced down to two. The Gurkhas are still trading very well. And Minimalt was just unable to ascertain a mass of units behind this. The, the, the Eco is working the way quite nicely. He's aged up. He's sending five Hussar. Uh, just felt that maybe a stable somewhere else behind. And just keeping some of these units away from the initial fight uh, would have been a little bit more desirable. Do Musk trade efficiently versus Sowers? They they do. Sowers, they are Lancer style cavalry, but only versus the skirmishers and archers, not versus musketeers. Musketeers absolutely shred Sowers. But if you can get the snare on, then the Gurkhas behind pick off many, many units. 
The five Hussars pop out. No Minutemen available here, but the Hussars straight onto the Gurkhas. The town centre focusing down the Sepoys. And this push here from Lucas has essentially ran out of steam from a very smart shipment here for Minimalt. It's always tempting as the British player to open up with the nine Musketeers or the two Falconets. Um, but it's opted with the five Hussars, even though the Colonial has certainly paid off big time here. So a real smart pop there for Minimalt. I'd say at the moment, honours even. Uh, a lot of raiding, quite a few villagers have gone down. Minimal, no great coats, has lost a few villagers needlessly in that sense. Meanwhile, Lucas, gone for this more economic playstyle, 700 wood, did get foreign logging in. Got 39 villagers, but these are heavily upgraded villagers, and the wood trickles will have a increase that eco to a very similar level. Don't think he's on his way to any fort to go into the third age. But getting camel attack behind this and starting to mass sour Zambarax to deal with that Sosar opening. And just having this strong eco, should be able to spam more units behind this. Need a few, a bit more coin. Another house. Maybe time to drop down a barracks behind this so we have double musketeer or infantry production. Nice raid left side. Minimalt trying to push across the map. But the sours are there straight away. Now Minimalt's thinking, okay, all my hunt is under... Indian control. Now I'm in trouble. A couple turkeys down here. But he's exhausted all his other hunting supply. He's aged up. He's lost his mass. He's got his two falconets. Minimalt basically needs to train a big batch of musketeers here. Maybe buy a bit of food. He's only got four in the field. Now six. One more batch to come. He needs everything he can muster to protect these falconets to push back out. But the sours, they smell that there's RTO in the field. The cavalry are charging in on top of these... Um, Falconets. Uh, one Sour's chosen the correct path onto the Falconets. The others have gone to the bottom side. Musketeer pops straight onto these units, buying some food to get on the hand combat as well. The Sour's low HP. They can't get onto the artillery. What a great pop here from Mini Malt. Lucas feeling that he had those artillery pieces for free, but chose the wrong way to go down the town center. And the Musketeer's hand combat just shredding, absolutely shredding the cavalry units there. The Vet Musk with the Musk attack. Ooh. That same DE pathing. I don't think it's definitive edition pathing. I think the camels clicked down here from this position, yes. went down to the southern side, but by that time, um, Lucas brought his cannons around to the northern side. I think the ideal would be split into two groups. One go one side, one go the other, but uh, Lucas bringing his um, artillery pieces down to the southern and centre side first, and then to the barracks in time for a five musketeer pop. Was that 200 IQ play that we all love to see? Minimal only on 34 villages now. Still having to push out across the map for Hunt. But for a player who's gone for the Virginia Company boom, having less villagers than your Indian opponent, or yeah, it's identical, very, very close. So there must have been a little bit of raiding on the Indian player's side, but not too much. It's not ideal. Lucas aging up. Gonna lose two Gurkhas there and a third on the bounce back splash. Wow, that is a very lucky shot. That is gonna be a temping bowling clip later on. Um, well, it's, it feels like that's like a spare shot. You know, you go you go for the first volley and pick up two, and the then the rebound gets another one. So, okay, okay, technically the spares two bowling balls, but you know what I mean. Hey, Lucas aging up does not have to be aggressive at the moment. Just gonna sit back, take control. Let's look at Lucas's. Line of sight, control over the uh, turkey and deer. Okay, not necessarily full control, but has vision whether they're being eaten or not. Control over this hunt. These villagers are happily gathering behind. Asian up here with the Charmanar Gate, so one Mahout Lancer with the ability to train Mansabdar, Gurkha, Zam, and you know, all the other Mansabdar units. In base coin mine's gone out, but he does have two back coin mines, or somewhat back, very safe. Another hunt up here. Loads of resources available for the Indian player. Lots of map control. Okay, now he does see that Minimalt has moved out onto the western side of the map and actually dropping down uh, one outpost, one mana house. The outpost is important here. Mini knows this is his lifeline, his life supply of all the food for the British Empire. Once these deers run out, Mini is in big trouble because there's no berries in base to rely on. And now, at this point in the game, it's a little bit late to go for a, a transition to the water. It is possible. It was always possible. But you want to get the payback as fast as you hoped it would be. Oh. 
Lucas's point of view, opening up with two siege elephants, because he knows that there's two falconets in the field. Lucas is thinking, I've got a better eco than the British player. If I can trade my shipment of two siege elephants for your two falconets, siege elephants are pretty woeful versus anything which isn't artillery or buildings or boats. Asar Ray topside will get punched down by the villagers, but realising high HP there causes the Zams to, to back them up. Uh, one villager does go down, but the others will be fine. Lucas does know that the army is here. Let's look at his ride with his perspective. He knows the infantry and, and artillery charging forwards. A couple of villagers here, a little bit exposed, but what Lucas wants to do is bring the British force into his base. He doesn't want to push out too early, engage. He wants to try and snipe off the Falconets from the side, fire and move. He might go in for the seconds here. Okay, that's a big batch of Zambrax. Muscus is trying to try and move across to get some sort of pot shots on the Siege Elephants, but the lock-on has happened. One Siege Elephant at risk going down here. Might want to pull it back and just keep it safe just to maybe raid Manor Houses, but... Uh, Minimal realizing he's back off here, hasn't got enough units to deal with Lucas's army, and he's in player just pushing back out now. Nice raid, top side though, villagers going down, musketeers picking off, um, I'm going to estimate a good four villagers there. There were lots of villagers already moving away previously, so Lucas hasn't lost too many. Okay, Lucas, he's moving out with his infantry, chasing down musketeer longbow, Zam's chasing the remaining musketeers. Got to be careful that something just doesn't pop out from the British player and catch these Gurkhas out in the middle of the open. But I think Mini Molt's just trained to have a double batch of musketeers, training even more musketeers behind this. No cavalry in sight for a while with the musketeer combat. And I think Gurkhas are going to be pretty safe. Remember, these, these Zambraks are disciplines. They do have their camel attack, 30% on the attack of these units there. So, Light Dragoons, you know, one pop, quite cheap. 22 attack for each Zambrak is very, very strong. Minimalt knows this. He can't go cavalry at the moment. He can maybe mix, mix in a couple of Dragoons to help out with the Mahouts closing in, but can't really go for cavalry at this moment in terms of the hand cav. Can't really... I mean, he's going full musketeers, but he really needs to have some sort of composite mix of longbow musketeers because yeah the musketeers will get torn to pieces by pure <laughs> pure Gurkha and Yurumi and uh, oh this is this is tough this is for the British player now because what counters Gurkha and uh, Yurumi Hussar as well you've got a big batch of disciplined Zambraks you need mass longbows to do with that but if you have lo longbows and Hussars you've got less musketeers to do with well this Mahout Lance coming in um, a couple of sepoys Another ra single musketeer raid. Mini trying his best to be annoying and raid. But if you look at this force from Lucas, I don't really know how you'd go about building a competition for this. You probably have to go pure, pure longbow with a couple goons behind to try and help. But uh, Yumi, Yumi don't do that well versus longbow. Uh, they don't have any multipliers, and longbow have a arranged resist. I'll see Yumi do the arranged attack. But this is pretty tough. Let's check Lucas's deck. Does he have Count Infantry Rifling in his deck? He does not. He does have the Royal Green Jackets. So he does have Count Infantry Rifling available if he does uh, choose it. And actually, that might be a nice tactical card for him to invest as his next card. But both armies postulating. Gurkha's trading with the Musketeers. And you can see how Lucas wants to kind of wear the infantry down first before committing with his Yurumi Mohu to clean up behind this. A lot of Zam's going down, but I think Lucas knows that there's no cavalry on the field here for Minimal. Be a big brain play for him to for Mini to pivot into cavalry. Okay, Mahout Lance are chasing down, tanking so much damage here. You see how Mini's trying to focus on the Yurumi instead. He's microing quite well here. He's microing his heart out. He doesn't want to target down the Mahout, he wants to target down the Yurumi. And he has enough uh, musketeers here to one hit kill these units. But the man's of dark. Gurkha is out in the field now. Big boy Gurkha further buffing his units. Lucas likely to be sending royal green jackets or the. Uh, British East India Company going for eight Gurkhas here, looks like. Yeah, eight Gurkhas plus one villager to remass behind this. Also, another very good shipment. I would feel that I would prefer an, an upgrade at this point for his Gurkhas. We still train very well, though. 19 times by two versus the Musketeers. We do have a lot of HP, though. They are very stacked in upgrades. Veteran Musketeers, Musk Combat, and Musketeer Attack. No Musk HP in for just yet. He has a shipment to, shipment to send, but realistically, what does he send? He's going dock. One dock going down. Twelve villages on the wood. 
he does have Gangsaw. No log for him just yet. Is this a schooner's play? No, no schooner's in deck, so he can't get those fast producing fishing boats for him to quickly transition his eco onto the water. Uh, there is some hunt down here, which he could move on and try and fight. He does have hunt top, but that's nearly running out. Musketeer is going for more raiding, trying to buy some time. This is a diversion tactic for Minimolt. Luckily, he didn't lose all of them running past the Gurkhas. Could have easily got all of them picked off. Another town centre there. The third town centre from Lucas coming up top side. Just securing vision, securing map control. Minimot knows that he's down. He's got no map control. He hasn't got the army. And he taps out. Lucas taking game number one here. Interesting game, really. We had a Virginia Company boom from Minimalt and actually opened up quite defensively. Double racks really early. Lucas went for a delayed time in age two, really focusing on his eco behind this. The Hussars, um, there's Bustachi Hussars from the Ottoman Consul, must have put in some good raids behind the initial push. Quite a lot of these uh, villagers, I think, went down to the Sepoy and the Gurkhas pushing from the front with their ranged attack. Can't fully confirm that. A lot going on, but I know that uh, Lucas was taking some fantastic trades versus Mini Malt's army. So we did have the elephants going in, snaring the army first. We had the sepoys, Gurkhas firing behind. When the Sowers come in, they get onto the Longbows. The Longbow Age Up comes in, quickly dispatched. The Star still raiding around. More Gurkha reinforcements come in, and all these batches were essentially musketeer batches. And there's always about 10 to 15 Gurkhas on the field, and some great trades there from Lucas. Forcing a five Hussar shipment early for Mini. Does get a good uh, pick up there. Buys himself some time. Uh, but realistically from there, couldn't get too much achieved moving forwards. Oh yeah, this is the... Um, I was wondering what this drop was. So this was the five Hussar onto the Gurkhas. But in come the second batch of Consulate Hussars and a big batch of Sours. Chasing Falconets around the town centre, but quickly getting cleaned up by a batch of five musketeers, town centre fire and chasing masks. So that was this was almost a GG moment, but just pushed the game back, age up behind, um, picking off the Falconets essentially for free with the siege elephants, so nice trade there, and then just came in with the larger army, more upgradable, and yeah, it was um it was a very well um closed out game there from Lucas. Did the damage early on but played smart, played for map control, and safely closed the game out in his favour. Uh, so got all resources. Yeah, Indian Eco just taken off there. This is quite a lot of Iowa time here from the Minimalt. We had to move all his villagers across, and you can see that in the idle villagers. There's going to be two massive spikes. Okay, first massive spike when he's under pressure from the Indian army. Second, when he's moving from one resource patch to another and then being pushed back. But at the end... Just all this uh, hunting being denied or running out of hunts and having to go onto water and maybe move to the southern coast where there were more turkeys and deers available to be hunted. So that there is going to be the sec first game. We're going to move on to game number two. As per usual, I have five recorded games to cast through. So let's see if this goes all the way. Right, guys, game number two. We're on to Kota for game number two. Mini Malt spawning into the north of the map, playing as the Portuguese civilization in the color blue. His opponent, Lucas L99, playing as the Chinese civilization, spawning into, into the southern of the map in the color purple. Hmm, <clears throat> China versus Portuguese. The Portuguese on this map, mid map trading route, four trading posts with these uh, native settlements as well. This does suggest an, a, that advanced train post is a good idea on this map. Otherwise, you re don't really have many other ways to boom on this map apart from just trying to you know, play the long game delay. Lucas on his side of the map, or he, from his perspective, uh, recently there's been a change of meta from China from more of a straight fast fortress into a semi-FF agenda. Hashtag the semi-FF gang, but I expect would be surprised if Lucas aged up Summer Palace. But in transition, chops a lot of wood, throws down a barracks, throws down another village, maybe a trading post, open up with an old hand batch, send pikemen behind this to put pressure on trading posts, then maybe send either the chew canoe to deal with a musk response or step riders to have more siege output, and then age behind. 
quite interesting though in this change of meta because now most players are now wary or aware that the China can stay H2, get some shipments out, get some map control, some presence, really have to react to it. And that allows essentially the straight naked FF with no pressure. If if your enemy is expecting some colonial play, and then they look at the clock and see that you've aged up to the third age by seven minutes flat. Well, you've caught them <laughs> unexpected. And then China reverts to their very strong, classic, fast fortress build. So um, two clear options on the table from Lucas. No real deviation in the opening that the Portuguese can scout. And I think that's real tactical advantage of do I stay age two for a bit or do I go straight to the third age? Uh, it's, it's given China a little bit of um, breathing space. Uh, how I've recently seen and recently played with them as well. So, yeah, China, I once thought were near the bottom of the pack. I, I think we, we started to find it out, starting to get feel it a little bit more. First shipment from Lucas, likely to be Northern Refugees, delayed heavily. And I'm a bit confused because it's just a single village. He's got one villager in queue. He's now sending it behind. I think he really wants to get this village down so he gets the three villagers. But you see he's thrown down the village now. Maito does say that you can start building the village when this timer gets to the, the bottom right corner there. So I think Lucas, given it's a tournament game, wants to ensure he gets all the villagers out there instead of maximising villager efficiency. But he did delay the shipment a lot and I'm not really too sure if he managed to pick up an XP treasure to actually make him get a bit surprised 25 xp 25 coin um another 10 xp with those treasure guardian kills two treasures there um 70 foods so that would be two black bears that's 20 xp he's, he's actually got quite a lot of xp here for um uh, treasure guardians and treasure guardians treasure guardian kills which is quite nice Oh, what, what an amazing treasure here for China. Uh, really well played in terms of being aware that this treasure is on the map and once you've seen it, has gone for it. So the healer treasure does what it says in the tin. It heals Explorer, but what it means is you can be really aggressive with Explorer taking treasures. Like this uh, Tomahawk treasure, stun one black bear. going to take two on <laughs> with just by himself. A couple of scratches, doesn't matter. Got the healer here to him up afterwards, so it's fine. But sc scouting... Doesn't see the train post run down here by Minimal. The second icon has only just popped up onto the screen, so Minimal's only just built his second. If we go into Minimal, I've already seen it, but I wanted to finish this idea first. Mini. Advanced trading post here. C card number one. 10 10 age up behind this. Looking to take map control. Does have a villager building the back trading post, but you can see how the explorer has gone for the first train post and then worked his way across. And. Yeah, this is this is the problem of not opening up a, as a trading post to the Chinese and going for the oh I can make the a little bit more bonus with the extra cheaper village, villages from 190 woods down to 180. Um, Lucas is gonna have a little look, a little bit of a gander to see if he can get onto the trade line, but he'll realise as soon as one of his trading posts take a shot, and maybe it's out of range, he'll realise there's no space on the trading line for himself, and that Lucas would really need to open up with a pikeman shipments to deal with one of these train boats if he wants to get onto the line. Oh, House of uh, Braganka. I was about, I was about to say House of Brananka, but I knew it wasn't that. Sounds like um, a house from the Game of Thrones series. Free upgrades to the stagecoach and the iron horse. On Dakota, where the train boats have been hard-coded to give minus 15% um, XP yield and resource yield. And yeah, and also the um, trade and post nerf on Definitive Edition minus fifteen percent from the previous ESOC patch from the old game. These uh, TPs are working about seventy percent effective, as maybe Minimal might actually price them as. So I'm not really feeling that upgrade there from Portuguese, but I guess he's still only now sending the seven hundred wood. Doesn't really need to train units that early, and we'll get some. Good tempo from that shipment. Yes, Portuguese, they do have the full train post before China age, and that's the power of the um, advanced train post. But also, agent 1010. So, when when you're aging, you don't need any more 
um, food gatherers to train villagers because your town center is busy researching technology. So all your villagers can transition onto wood. Train posts only cost in 120 wood with the advanced training post, and you can just take map control essentially for free. But in versus the Portuguese, I'm you're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to say, you know, when I was looking at the opening position, I was kind of expecting an age one training post, but I, you know, I'm not the greatest player. But if you look back at the recorded game like we're doing now, feel for the age one trading post. Back to classic China strategies would have been the preferable play here for Lucas. So nine pikemen, first shipment here for Lucas. He really realizes he needs to deal with the um, train posts, get some units out on the map, get some initiative. There's a town centre nearby and a barracks. Taking down the train post is absolutely fine, but it does not want to get drawn underneath the town centre. Eight bow shipment coming in from Mini Malt. Remember, at, as stagecoaches upgraded, all these all the stagecoaches give you XP depending on where the um, trade cart is. So Mini swimming in shipments for the time being. Explorer in cover mode for the time being to soak up some of his crossbow damage. That healer, I think, just got picked off. That's a bit of a bummer. Oh, no, no, the healer's down here. Two dots. There's some blue dots down here. Some pikemen. Really exposed village. Line of sight is very, very nice. But no answers to pikemen. Send in some two canoes and pikemen across to help defend it. Should be enough to defend it. Okay, Lucas knows what's up. He scouts the railway. So he knows that uh, Minimalt's... Obviously, you know, his game plan revolves around keeping control of this trading line. Minutemen coming up. Minutemen multipliers versus step riders. These steps are about to get absolutely nuked on. I don't really know why Mini wants to try and go to hand combat, but I think he just wants to try and get another volley off before these guys retreat out of range. But you can split these guys up very well on step riders. Step riders only having uh, 150 with 30% range, so 15, that's uh, 165, 180, 195 effective range HP. Minutemen. 50 per shot, so four shot kill from a minute, man. So a bit of splitting up there could have uh, wouldn't have gone a mass. Other things to talk about and note: we see the German consulates here coming from Lucas, wanting to spend some of the exports on the trickle technologies. But I think realistically, when the time comes, I think he's going to put those trickles off and go for the three doppelsodners from the consulate. Uh, they are known as Zwao Handers, but you know, they are consulate doppels. More importantly, the German consulate, I think it's 20% off on the food price for batches of units. But given that in the colonial age and in the fortress age and basically all ages, all of your batches of resources or no, batches of military production predominantly cost more food than they do other resources. It's actually a really cheap investment or Okay, it's not a cheap investment. It's um, a very beneficial um, investment to go with this German consulate to get you know, your batches much, much cheaper. So instead of costing 255 food for an old hand batch, plus 180 wood, I think the price drops down to about 200. So you know, 55 food saving per batch. This is probably about the fourth batch now. You know, getting that investment back pretty quickly. And this massive bow pike is starting to grow. And Bo Pike, you can't really go full musketeer into it. Hussars is a little bit sketchy in the situation. Ideally, he wants lots of crossbow. Crossbow Huss would be quite nice to deal with this. Um, here comes a big batch of Huss. The, the, the double batch of Huss is actually going to be enough to force Lucas back and should be enough to defend. But you can see how Minimal didn't want to commit to the cleanup there. Just didn't feel strong enough. And enough pikemen, 18 pikes, 7 with a 5 multiplier, 35 hand attack versus... Um, Hussars, and yeah, these are quite cheap, and given how Lucas has gone for that cheaper technology, or to make his batches cheaper, can just continuously remass. He needs to um, think about what his next plan is, though. 900 food. Does he want more units? Because he needs to put a lot more into wood, if that's the case. Or does he want to send 700 coin and age up behind? He's gone through all his unit shipments. Could go could go export here, really. Could, could go export to get that batch of uh, doppels and get a trickle to go with it as well. Gonna go 600 wood. 700 wood? Oh yeah, yeah. Again, even center, yeah. That's a great shipment. That's gonna be another village. The village upgrade. Another Bax. And two batches of old hand. So, um, nice unit. I think, from China's perspective, I'd like to see Cree settlement being taken right now on that 700 wood. You have a lot of, you have a lot of food. 
Uh, you, you can only train villagers at once. So there's no other real way to grow your economy. And you're not looking to age anytime soon. Okay, yeah, Huss Batch comes out. We'll pull a couple of pikemen away. Here come the Huss Batch from behind. Ten of them. Uh, Lucas is on the wrong side of the trading post here. He can't retreat. He has to take this fight. However, the fight's going very well for him for the time being. Hussar's just gone straight into the pike one, hoping that the muskets and crossbows will be enough behind. But actually, it's taking a very positive trade versus the Hussars. Well, the Hussars going down. The pikemen have done their work, and the two canoes uh, should be strong enough to deal with the remaining army, or at least trade. Has the Portuguese got enough eco behind with their three TP train eco behind us? Or well, no, only now two? Yeah, just look at his. Mini's only got 16 military population on the field compared to Lucas's 24. Another big batch of standard army coming out. Two Steppy Riders, uh, three True Canoes. There's this old hand batch from the War Academy. Mm. <laughs> uh, I did not like that engagement for Mini Malt, considering that that train post had gone down at that point. If the train post was still up, I think Lucas would have um, had to decide where he wants to go for the fight. Or take the, the or commit to the trade and post and has that extra bit of like do I do I not? <sighs> Mongolian Scourge is the next card here from China. Honestly, I'm not a fan of this. Don't think you get too much from it. Keshik Multiplier, Step Siege, Step Multiplier versus Villagers. That's about it. So at the moment, maybe an extra Multiplier versus Cav, but that's only that's only an extra extra eight damage per shot before we get the range resist the steps they do more siege but he's not on the villagers any he's not really been raiding villagers he hasn't got that much massive a cavalry behind this this is the moment where you just kind of like ship 700 coin and cavalry it up with one or two villagers keep training your old hand batches but eventually stop have all your villagers on the food and go oh hang on a minute i've got enough resources to age and i've got an army to go with it Jesus is asking for me to follow the train and watch the train instead of watching the game and the fighting. How many kills will this chain train get? Will he run over the Chinese army? It's coming. Oh, it's a massacre. Oh, they're all done. Oh, wait. No, it's not. No, they're still alive. They're still alive. Hassar raid down to the southern uh, flank. Really nice there from Minimal, using his mobility uh, to his full advantage. I think Lucas has tried to herd this hunt towards the village as best as he can, but you can't necessarily move a village. It's quite awkward in that sense. Um, oh, musketeers caught out. Why? Why are they on the southern flank of the Chinese bow army? This is risky for Minimo. This is very, very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. A couple of pikes here. Five speed enough to snare. The musketeers are stopping for a little bit of a drive-by shooting on the villagers, but I'm not liking any moment of stopping. You cannot afford to give any time. He's standing. He's Gonna try and kite, kick, pick off a couple pikemen, and that signals to me that he um, he admits that this army is toast. He knows that they're gonna die, and he's gonna try and trade it off instead. So instead of trying to escape, he's gonna try and trade off. So I like how he's gonna commit to one over the other instead of trying to do a bit of both. He's gonna try escape. But he just needs to stand and fight now. This army is gone. It's gonna to die. The bow is gonna get a volley off. They kind of keep moving. Yeah, yeah. It's just you need to get you need to get as much value as you can from that. Pikes and bows still sieging the training post. I think this is a rally point. But yeah, the musks are going to go down. No musk attack on the Portuguese player just yet. And he's advan oh. Ooh, advancing while pushing is a criminal offence. And Age of Empires is free. So there's now an agent behind us with very little military units behind us to back this up. Just imagine if... Those musketeers were kiting and trading with the army underneath the town centre. Maybe say, okay, you have the trading post. But I'm going to age behind and use my tempo to um, send a shipment like organ guns. Because you've got the musketeers to protect it. Go vet musk. Got all these resources to train units. But at the moment, he, he needs to really invest all into military just to try and hold his position. Going castles here. Castles should be enough versus the Keshiks and the Pikemen, but there's so many bows from Lucas. Really impressed by this continuous mass and always keeping the two canoes protected in the sense that in that big engagement, yeah, the Pikes went in. He lost the steps, but the bows were always alive. And now it's a real strong range infantry mass there from the Chinese player. Let's look at export count. I haven't seen any dops being trained whatsoever. So I would have assumed that 
the German food, the German food trickle, and the German wood trickle has been researched. And the coin, I think it's in the third age, locked behind, is available. Castles spawn into the forward town centre. They're going to get picked up and cleaned very, very quickly. Enough steps on top. The Keshiks will turn onto the Hussars, but there's enough Chukanu to actually get some real strong damage on the veteran Cassadors. You know, they have 45% range resist, but versus 38 bows, it probably won't be enough. Castles may get alive, but he has to sacrifice seven, seven Hussars just to get this distance, and that's just not a trade worth taking. the multiplier i think it's 0.75 versus cavalry so standard multipliers you know as all light infantry have we have so many of them um and also crossbows are the type of units the chukunu are very similar to the crossbow uh higher base damage shorter range and lighter hp but mass assigned to crossbow i would say assigned to mass crossbow not often you know, get much done there so now the Chinese player does have double trading post. Looking to send coin to age up behind us, but realistically he can put his stagecoach onto coin. Yep, he can sell a bit of food. He can probably sell a bit of wood as well for a good price. And if you've got your trade stagecoach, you can just change it back onto wood at a later point to recuperate it. But won't even need the uh, coin to age up from the shipment. We'll age up naturally behind this. And that will leave him the shipment to send maybe five meteors first card. I think five meteors for card one would be a good shout here. Could go con... Um, could change to British Consulate and go Intervention, but I don't think Musketeers is what you really want, especially when you've got, really got a big mass of Hachukanu. There's just no cavalry presence here from Minimalt. Really needs a hero man pop. Lots of coin available. He's going to go CM here, but none of his town centres are together. Third town centre across the map, trying to secure map and resources, but as a defensive core. One CM town centre probably won't be enough. This town centre is going down. Unfortunately, the minute has already been called and won't be in time to get the CM big big batch coming on. So nine villagers inside at risk. There are enough Chukanus nearby. These are very strong units to deal with the mini, uh, villagers. Once again, no great coats have been researched here. Chukanus firing. Will they get one kill? Nah, not not. Uh, fight Mike have done the settlers. The micro actions here. And yeah, if Lucas is aging up behind us, he's aging up with the tower. Yeah, so that's basically a free factory for him. And that's the thing, like, Lucas can now just drop down a second, second war academy, move all his coin villages onto hunts, and just train up four batches of the double cavalry spawn in the, of Forbidden Army in the Third Age, send five meteors, and then you have essentially the thick end of 8 plus 5, 13 meteors and 8 iron flails and Portuguese won't have much to do with that, even if they go Mamluks won't have enough and the Dragoons will be enough to, well there'll be enough Chukanu to deal with any Dragoons coming out so I think that'd be a way for Lucas to close this out, as is that's his potential strategy to go for it Ooh, villagers on the southern side nice position actually, away from the Chaya base, away from the army I'm not too sure Lucas has even scouted that part of the map. Oh, he just about has. Oh, he just about sees it. If he notices it, that could be pretty dangerous there for Minimal. Currently working with just about the score lead. But here we come. Discipline Chukanu. Big batch of cavalry being trained. Cav being shipped. Another batch of cavalry being trained. Here comes capitalism from the consulate, which is bugged. I think this is the old capitalism, not being up updated to the current capitalism. So only 1.25 point per second instead of 1.65. Hashtag get that in on the hotfix. But double batches of the Cav army. Sometimes it feels nice calling it and always justifying you know the, the idea rational behind it. But Lucas, he knows there's so many castors here. He knows he's got enough answers for the Dragoons and the Discipline Chukanu. He knows he doesn't really need to change into Arquebusiers here because he's already got that Chukanu mass. And the Explorers are coming for a trying to snare to protect his castors. Buy some more time to get more of that range. That range being achieved, but he sees all his cavalry thinking, oh, nope, 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 I'm getting the hell out of here. And he's uh, running away, skedaddling, but big range, 
Big raid on the southern side. Remember, step rider, multiply versus villagers. Mongolian Scourge has been researched. Villagers, no great coats. This is um, this is like a very weak version of a preach nuke, but function the same way. Uh, two villas going down, idling all these villagers. Luke is still keeping control of two trading posts. Checking his deck, he does have the cavalry double face armor card. HP and armor uh, range resist. He's going to send that now. I like that card. I like that idea. Um, realizing he doesn't need more units, doesn't need to send the Chang Daos or the Arquisiers. I think quite a lot of people will be going, right, shipment, 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 then think about it. But it doesn't need repelling volley. It's Skirm Goon, not too many goons here. Mams have been called here for Mini Molt. Here we go. We've got a fight on our hands. Will Lucas take the fight before his double-faced armor comes in? He's got more cav batches being trained behind this. Dragoons will try and trade as much. Ah, oh, Dragoons going forward. That's a big volley onto the, the Dragoons. Only one goes down. Second goes down. Two quite low HP. Mamluks have been revealed. But there's so much hand cav here. The cav's going to go straight onto the castles. And we, if we see some OP micro, we're going to see all the meteor hammers onto the Mamluks. And all the iron flails run past onto the castle doors. These guys, area damage and multipliers versus castadors, high HP and range resist, will melt the castadors like a hot knife through butter. Mamluks being pinned down here by the meteor hammers, but the two canoes just running past, focusing down the dragoons one by one, ignoring the castadors, because once the dragoons go down, there's nothing at home to protect the castadors. There's so much more cavalry. Remember these guys, high HP and high range resist as well, thanks to that card. Lucas sending the right card at the right time. This is a cleanup. And this is game number two, going in favour of Lucas. Nice, 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 nice. Real interesting play there. So, Lucas playing the Chinese, staying age two, wrestling control of the trading line from the Portuguese player. Uh, Minimot committing, must cast into that big fight, but didn't come out on top from all those um, 18 pikemen. Lost control of the map, lost control of the train line. You know, it's, remember, it's a train line, it's not just a stagecoach or no or just regular TPs. And Lucas is able to age it behind. And I think, yeah, that was the game at that point. Really nicely played by Lucas. I mean, in the Fortress Age, sending the right card for the right time and training the right units as well really help. Instead of just going for the classic, I was going to go for the Sword Skirm Army. He realised Cav was what he needed. And that won him the game. Let's have a look at the post game timeline. Military population. Yeah, Lucas always always had enough, but like once he has this this large, large lead, that was the safe time for him to advance up. Didn't need to send the coin to advance behind this. Did lose quite a few years before getting to the next stage. But remember, he lost most of his Keshiks, most of his Step Riders, most of his Pikemen, but the Chukanoo Mass was still stay alive. Upgraded to Discipline Chukanoos, and then just researching Cav Batches, and then cleaned up afterwards. The Eco, Mini Mortal Ahead, quite a lot of these would be crate shipments, I'd say. I think the actual Eco, though, was stronger for Lucas. More villagers towards the end, more, more of them were gathering, the Porcelain Tower working. And we can see the gradients of the lines are different, with Lucas catching up to Mini Mortal's. Um, eco. All right, let's get on to the next game. Fundamental saying, hi, do you need casters with a good setup and good game knowledge? I'm glad you asked that. Always looking for other stuff. I think all the admins are asleep right now. I don't see any of the admins in chat. I know that Brand Boy's out celebrating exam results in somewhere in the middle of Amsterdam or Netherlands. I don't know. I'm not too sure Brand Boy knows. I'm not too sure he's going to remember. But certainly, yeah, ping, ping me, Comet, Noel, Brand Boy, post on stock somewhere. Remind us, we'll get on it. Uh, we'd like to see a cast recorded game just to check to see if you're if you do have a setup and. Uh, you do have some knowledge. How much knowledge do you reckon you need to cast a game? I think to objectively cast, to comment on what you see. Like, for example, okay, here's Lucas. He's picking off a line. He's going to pick off the 40 wood. That wood, quite useful. Might help build him another house, which costs wood. Yeah, 
Objective commentary is quite easy. Just say it as you see it. Can't go too, too wrong with her. Um, I'm guessing ELO range. If I was putting a random ELO on it, probably about 1,400 as a minimum. Uh, 1,300, 1,400. I think at that point, you that's when you really know. That's, where, that's when it starts just kind of playing the game to actually really knowing what's going on and understanding the um, in-depths of the game. But, you know, there's always... There's always um, Rangers, there's always people. And I think at the end of the day, I cast because I really enjoyed the game. I really put the passion in, and I've, let's like say, I've got better as time's got on. And same could be said for everybody. But we're back on Dakar here for game number three. Mini Malt spawning as the Spanish on the left hand side of the river. No trees. Looking for his trees. I'm struggling to find his trees. He's got some trees on the north side. But sometimes having more defensive trees here for the Incan player. It's quite nice. Uh, both players having their elephants, their starting deer, two mines, eight berry bushes, high resources, amazing map this is, lots of yaks on the top side. I think there's I think there's eight in total on the map. And so far it looks like Minimort has got four from his dog and explorer scouting. While as the Incan player, Lucas, probably not as many. Let's have a look in his base. He's only got yeah, the one yak. So there's only six yaks on the map, pardon me. I feel, I feel that the Incan Explorer just needs to keep keep hammering away at the dog, force the dog away, and once the dog stops attacking you, you actually get out with a lot more HP. I know he wants to try and keep the distance away from the Explorer, but for the time being, the Explorer is actually standing still occasionally taking pot shots instead of trying to get that snare off. So here comes just one attack, two attack. But yeah, I guess in age one, it's, it's, it is a really low attack with multipliers versus Treasure Garden to kind of compensate. That dog's still alive and... Lucas running for the town centre, only picking up one yak. Hasn't been a, hasn't been great for him to open up this game. We see card one. Is oh shit! <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> I love the radio colleges. Well, who knows? I, I think you guys, I think you guys can just appreciate and just imagine what was going on. Not much has gone on. Um. <laughs> People saying restart. Oh, there's nothing. There's nothing interesting. Okay, what we saw Lucas go north, try and find the axe. Couldn't find the axe because they got someone by Minimalt, and Minimalt chased Explorer from here down to here. I feel like a twat now. After saying like, oh yeah, I think I've got better casting. Forgot the rule number one. Check your overlay. <laughs> oh well, banter. This, this is actually quite close. I think the flying will go down, but it's lost a lot of HP here. No way to build a train post and try and deny a 4TP Spanish play. Let's look at Minimal. The flavor of the month so far has been Logistician, age up. Age up with the Logistician, 12-10. Let's check his deck, see if he's thinking of any water play. He too is also sending schooners. Hmm. I would really like to see at this point advanced train post coming into this card. This is the build I did versus Noel. Send advanced train post at this point. And once you once that comes in, your your four your remaining three train posts are very cheap. Once the your wood shipment comes in, you can then instantly research stagecoach and then instantly throw down a barracks or in this case for him maybe a dock, and kind of play it from there. Also, your Bacti temple will be cheaper as well. At some point, you want to get that vegetarian vegan upgrade. But Schooner's coming in, uh, really delayed. Minimal. He hasn't worked out his timing of when to send this card. But it's quite a low impact card anyway, so it's not the it's not the biggest of um, problems there. It looks like he's cancelled the wood. He's scouted out. He must have scouted out a dock here from. No, is he is he going blind? Is he going blind fishing boats? I'm sure you can check his uh, the opponent's deck and assume some water. And yeah, there's no other cards in H1 you'd want to send. So I think he scouted the deck. Maybe if Lucas had 300 wood. You might want to check first whether the caravels first is a good idea, but I think Mini's rest assured that he feels quite safe. But you know, I, I guess it feels weird opening up two caravels. I possibly may have wanted to see the, the 300 wood first to train another caravel and then time it with the two caravel shipments so then you can properly clean up uh, this water play. A uh, war hut being thrown down on the coast. Yeah, he's aged up with two building travoirs, and one's been used to build a dock, but it's actually not being built. 
I don't know if that's a DE bug here. Uh, this one guy is um, getting quite wet. He's thinking, no, I don't, I don't want to go in the water. Let's go back. Thanks. I'm going to build a war hut. But this war hut will take some damage. He's going to tolerate the damage here from the town centre to try and pick up this war hut. But actually needs to think about it. A little bit of siege act from the dock. 100 from... 75 from the town centre. Okay, the, the war hut with 100 damage. That's the big damage dealer. Both caravels heavily damaged. Needs to back off. But that's a nice pickup so far there for, for mini malts. Caravels are going back to uh, recharge, but the problem is he's, he's aged up a lot of station, but he's got no he's got no trading post behind to fund this shipment progression. It feels like this is just not what he wants, because if you can get all four trading posts with the advanced trading posts, you upgrade to stagecoach, and then your stagecoach provides you all these experience points and the XP you get from the stagecoach upgrade, as well as all the XP you get from the stagecoach. It is, you get so many more resources from, okay, you get more resources by leaving the trading post on the stagecoach, on the XP income, and you'll get more resources from your shipments than just leaving the stagecoach on the resources up until shipment 10. So if you've got a lot of position and you've got the stagecoach line, leave it on experience points until your 10th shipment, because you'll get more bang for your buck at that moment and currently Minimox Logistician has he's only just sent schooners well, he's just sent schooners once okay so he sent fish market so he's got some resources back from the Logistician but he's really playing it like a he's just playing like a standard I guess instead of really making the most of what Logistician can offer and I think with a, this um, vote play could continue to send woods shipments straight after the other with this ATP play You'd have all the resources in the world just to spam the fishing boats. Four docks, train over two caravels, all the resources to play with. And I think that's actually a surefire way to win the game. I, 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 gen. Going to be. I don't think it slows the boat boom though. I don't think it does because, because the shipment progression here is so slow in comparison to having four stagecoach trading posts, and it's just that's the difference. At the moment, he's only got six fishing boats, but he's been aggressive on the water. You can always enter the water at a later point, but I'm I'm gonna stand by that. I think the resources, income, and the tempo from mini is just a little too a little slow, a little slow. But I, I love how he's been. Now he's got the caravels. He's really been a um, persistent uh, raiding. He's gone for the um, naval combat as well. So a strong shipment there. And I'm liking the, the naval um, shipment card. Advanced dock, though, to heal his boats at a faster rate. He does have a third caravel, so he's, once he's playing this anti water he knows what cards he wants to send. He's going to make the most of most of these cards. Again, advanced dock, though, an age one shipment. So we'll get the logistician bonus from this. Look at his resources pop up. There you go, extra resources as well as a strong age one naval shipment here. This is very, very nice. And I think we can discuss whether... Um, sending the schooners card card 2 or sending ATP card 2 uh, which way is better but I think what we can agree on though is that um, Logistician once it is in buffing your age 1 naval cards like your fish markets and your advanced dock you get some really great value from it and Minimox is making some good value of it raiding the fishing boats once again these docks very very defensive securing not really much of the water could have had forward war huts actually on the coast here and docks here securing more more um, parts of the naval side. But Chincharas here, three of them with their high attack, high rate of fire, and just incredible stats realistically are going to do an absolute mission. Naval combat coming in here for Lucas. Four Chincharas, the water, it feels like it's near enough gone already for Minimal. Just needs a, a war hut to be placed down here for some villagers. And yeah. Also, the, the, the frontal motion as well. Is that dodging a? Is that dodging a broadside? Nah, the broadside are homed in, but it's the frontal motion here. The kiting has to real pull back these uh, boats. Really low HP here, and I think Lucas, if he knows these boats are low HP, he can just go in, go in, just ignore the attack from the dock because you know the caravels are so low. You've got so many rafts. These are quite cheap. They're quite re uh, replaceable. You've got one, two, three docks easily pick off. And he's going to back off. Ooh. 
I guess he just sees the dock. He just sees the other caravel and wants to just recharge, but could have picked off three boats there and sent them to the grave forever, but that's going to get repaired on the advanced dock. Now, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying push the dock to take down the dock, but just take the fire to kill one, two, three boats on less than 100 HP instead of let them revive up. I mean, I'd rather take two, I'd rather lose three Chincharafts and kill three Caravels than let all three Caravels go up to full HP and not real gain much yourself. And that's... And that's that's the truth. No, it's okay. It's okay, Don. It's okay. I love you too. It's it's having a discussion. It's having a discussion, discussing ideas, working out the meta, and seeing what works, what doesn't work. And maybe from Luke's point of view, from his line of view, he saw two docks, saw fishing boats get into the bounce, into the bounce dock. Maybe he didn't quite check how much damage the dock was dealing. Maybe he didn't really know where those other caravels were. Maybe it was a bit of that kind of psychology of oh. Building fire is very strong versus my boats. I'm going to pull the boats back without thinking, actually, hang a minute, I can just clean this up. And that comes with experience with water play. And I don't think Lucas is much of a water player. Mini might be a little bit more accustomed to the water, likes his non standard strats. But both players going for water beams on, on Dakar. The TP line just feels so neglected. So, so, um, so not used to this. The TP line is usually the focal point. And also, nothing in the dock. This could be a time for Lucas to drop one dock in the pond and one chincharaf just to control and be annoying. And there's no way Spain can ever get back on to the, to the train line or cross the the um, river at that point. Spanish Armada crossing the map. Coming across seven chincharafs though. Chincharafs can pull back to the war hut and the dock. No fishing boats in the dock just yet. Actually doing quite a good job just body blocking. No great coats on these fishing boats though. But they're not, they're not the targets of... Mimot's um, forces. One caravel goes down for one Chincharaft or low HP pulled back. But yeah, losing so much HP here. Can't you can't take on Chincharafts in full on combat here. And Mimol He's got another shipment coming in. Team Coastal Defences here. Ooh, that is spicy. Okay, now now we're talking. Now we're talking. The, the combination of Vance um Doc and Team Coastal Defences, that's scary. That's turned the tide. But it's turned the tide in the sense that Lucas can't push the docks. But what he can do is just sit on the side and just 90 fishing. Draw a line. Right. I'm controlling everything this side of the line. You're not crossing this side of the line. This is my territory. You have your territory. I'm going to keep my territory. And actually has the well spawns actually a little bit more favoured in Lucas's uh, favour there. Agent up to the Fortress Age Mini Malt. Mini Malt making good use of um, mining from the whales. He's got four whales there, four whales there, four on the whales there. So making good use of prolonging his na naval resources. Chinch is coming in for another bite of the chariot's instruction, would say. On top of the fishing boats. Would he actually go for the fishing boats here? He goes for the fishing boats. Uh, reduce the damage from the advanced dock. Picks off one caravel. But with a 300 attack dock, depends on how many fishing boats are inside. Yeah, he needs to get out of here quickly. But actually, it takes quite a lot to realise what your opponent sent. But if you're seeing two Chinchraths go down, basically one after the other, you must know something's up. And <laughs> Chinchraff just surviving after one outpost and one advanced dock fire. What is Lucas up to at the moment? I feel that he's got a lot of... He's got more catcher houses. He's got more um, fishing boats. But he hasn't really got that tempo. But he, we, we keep talking about and alluding the, the momentum is all with minimal having fortress age dogs versus pikemen that's a keep chasing got to keep chasing those pikemen that's a great trade for your dogs really good frigate coming out naval combat on it can't no real answer in the time being waiting for the old ginger ass to heal up no advanced dock counter card here from the Incan player so yeah these ginger ass will take a lot while to get going and yeah Mini is pulling the head, and I think if Lucas actually went in and picked off those three low HP caravels when he had the opportunity before, um, was it Team Coast Defenses, and before many, many fishing boats got into the docks, I think only like six or seven got in. I only saw a siege attack there of 180. I think the Chinchrafts could have got a good, good trade there, but that water presence is now firmly in favour of Minimalt. And if Minimalt was really wanting to be aggressive, he's he's got the naval presence. So he can move forward and 
I was about to say drop an outpost here, but the town center's in range. Can't do that. No, I'd be way too close. Spanish. The trading post is coming from minimal. Is he going to go for the veggie upgrade? He has gone for the veggie upgrade. Isn't that great to see? Players remember their vegetarian upgrade, but no berries been eaten just yet from minimal. Town center up north from the hunt still. None of the berries in the gold mine, but going straight to the fourth age. Age up with the engineer. It's going to two falconets. Going to pop out from this outpost and start putting pressure on Lucas's forward base. But remember, naval combat on your frigate and your caravels. Sit your warships here. Inconutes cats do a thing, and it forces the uh, Chincharas to move forward. And there's a dock here, and there's an outpost here. Just put ten fishing boats into the dock, and you've controlled the entire map. So Minimal sent 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 cards. I think with the ATP play, you could send 15 cards by now, but that's just my uh, little little, uh, little spin on it. Um, so far, I've been some real strong play. Industrial Age, what would he do in the Industrial Age? Is there a potential for a Revolt option here? Revolt with the Argentinian Grenadaros? That could be. That could be quite a fun way to end the game. It does have a lot of um, villagers, fishing boats on the sea to keep that production going. But it's going to send the factory behind this and play some more age 4 um, traditional non-revolt focus. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. If he went Grenada, there's nothing Lucas can do versus it. And if he went with the Hussars of Death again, I don't see as much Lucas can do versus it. Like, maybe Hussars of Death not the strongest option here due to lack of siege, but you've got this fishing eco here, train a couple more boats. Okay, here comes advanced fortifications with coastal defences. Advanced Dock, obviously the Advanced Dock won't benefit from the heavy fortifications here, but a couple more outposts coming down. Okay, here's an, in here's an Incan Stronghold. I've never seen the Stronghold as a anti-water um, coastal defence, so interesting to see how this goes. Double Lance production here, so that does confirm no Chilean Hussar revolt here. Otherwise, you would go and start massing up your hussars for them to be upgraded to essentially pseudo imperial hussars. 750 HP or 800 HP and 45 hand attack. Very strong units here. Easily outclassed the plume spearmen and, and anything, anything the Incan player can get out on the field. Would struggle versus the buildings though, but this is when you start training monitors as the Spanish in the fourth age. You have a. Ah, oh, there's two falconets here. I think top tip is always to have a military waypoint for your town centre. Every game, just set a military waypoint forward. So at least they are separate to where your eco waypoint is. And then you don't have this issue of Falconets keeping your hunters safe. Okay, Lancers have been spotted. What is Lucas' response? He does see the fortified outpost. Here comes the double town centre. If you get the town centres... I guess he went town centers probably here, one here, one here, and try and get a little bit of presence. I don't think yoga was researched from. Oh, you did get yoga. Ah, Minimal. Minimal's getting all the technologies. He's done his homework, he's done his map analysis of DACA. It's very good to see. Um, Chaskis have just spawned out to a town travois, and that is oh, it's unlucky. Wow. Just seeing that as soon as it drops, and that should be town centered down or at least crippled with low HP and just send a couple of Rodoleros up later on. Harkonet's just chilling still. Is that the first monitor? That is the first monitor of two. Do we have the ship's howitzers being researched? Not, not yet. Not yet. Any more naval cards? No, don't see any Spanish galleons. Would be a bit of a meme if you saw those, but you know the, the option is there. Black Duke is, when is Giving Anxiety? Well, if Giving Anxiety played in the first week, probably in the past broadcast, I think that was cast, I think I watched it. Yeah, it was versus Optimus, wasn't it? But I think we're going to try and get through most most of the round of one before the round of two. I think we'll do round two on the week end. We've got the, we've got the Tac Cafe file to do as well, and that's going to be the showpiece of one of the nights. That that could be Friday night, it could be Saturday night. Um, yeah, I need to decide that, because that's a, that's a big, big series. That's like a huge series that is okay here comes the monitor long range bombard on the stronghold doing is that 3000 okay no it's just one long range and one mortar attack but the will force lucas to prepare that and that, and that just basically says right 
if I've got two monitors, that stronghold is down, whatever happens. You get the repair off now, but here's a warning shot for you. You need to do something fast before I destroy your entire base. Ah, oh, double attack. What's happened here? Why's it got double attack? What's happened here? Something, something big's happened. Is that just... Oh, it's always 100, is it? Oh, well, I'm being stupid. Or did, or did Mini Mort not go for that long range attack? Oh, I feel like I'm being stupid here. I, I didn't see any uh, text being researched on this. No, I'm being stupid. No, because that, that's the card. That's the card, not the tech. I think I'm, I think that's a bit of a stupid moment. I, he never, he never fired a long range shot. It was just three normal regular attacks. Is there any buildings have been nuked from long distance? No, I don't think so. Maybe this was long. Yeah, this is long because of the splash. But no, regular attack has splash as well. <laughs> the mystery continues. Both town centres being denied on the top side, though. I'm, I'm fixating over this monitor. and Oh, wow. Is that what the Incan market looks like? I've never seen that before. I generally have not seen an industrial Incan market, so that's nice uh, to see. A uh, lats arrayed in the back. Two shipments ready to go. I guess Cav Combat here, Cav Combat and rendering plan? You've still got fishing boats, I guess, and you're going to win water, so that could be a tactical thing to send. It does have the bearing upgrade, but no uh, guys on the berries. Uh, berries at this moment would be very, very strong, but you can always fall back on that. And yeah, I think, unfortunately, guys, I, I just, you look at the scores, you look at the map control, you, but you look at these bad boys, and you're thinking. What what Minimox's doing well is here. He's he's essentially won the water, even though there's like <laughs> there's an army of Chincharas. There's nothing these guys can do. That is crazy because of the advanced dock, one fortified outpost, a couple of artillery pieces, caravels, frigate. There could be a couple more outposts being thrown down. I want to see. Yeah, he's got quite a lot of fortified outposts on the top. I really want to see more being dropped down. And this is a very smart outpost here. I think this is building map control. This is building vision. If he can get if he can get these two up, that's going to be huge. Absolutely huge. Uh, Gatch Lisa Lancers on the field now for Minimal. They will go down, but they will get some nice scouting information, revealing locations of buildings, sending them to their monitor allies, and they're going to do some long range bombardments. <laughs> Paris saying. Um, <laughs> The combination between the map and the logistician age up for the Spanish is too strong in polite terms. And I, I think I agree because because although although opening how he opened up schooners into that first uh, wood sh not wood shipment in schooners and then had like the fish market and advanced doctor helping with the extra resources or maybe an extra church in there as well wouldn't go amiss. A second town uh, trading post would help. Um, Gatry says they don't counter champion Chimu runners, so I may need to transition into Espacha Rodoleros, the um, Royal Guards, but they're quite expensive for hand infantry if you haven't gone for the Papal Guard age up, so maybe not, but you feel that Rod Lance a combination at the moment will be the what he needs, or just building a spam, either or this works even better to be honest. Run, run, run away to the fortified outposts. And... Ooh. These guys, uh, was it a bombard? They don't have... They've got a little bit multiply versus cavalry. I don't think these guys actually class as cavalry, though. So it's just 60 per shot. But th the fact that this fortified outpost has got up... Let's look at his line of sight. He can see a couple of villagers here. He's, he's got everything. He's got Lucas under siege. And these villagers, they can't mine here. They're going to get killed. And get killed rather quickly, actually. There is a 0.25 negative multiplier here, or should I say positive multiplier, which has redu which reduces the damage, but still enough going on there. Chimi's going to go on to our howitzers, but you know the howitzers are strong, but not as strong as a monitor in terms of anti-building. Here come the Chinch of Rast, fortified outpost, defensive fire. There's a few boats in the advanced dock here, but enough Chinches here to clean the boats, I feel, but it won't push past the um, defensive structures. And trading, was it champion? Well, they are champion Chimid runners. Yeah, Lucas in the fourth age, and it's got some good strong eight units. Um, yeah, but just enough dock fire as well. The monitor's are actually not bad versus boats. Like, they're not the strongest, of course. No multipliers, but 140 per shot isn't, you know, to be sniffed at. 
poor elephant getting picked up there by the monitor. Not what you want to see. See? Luke. A question from the chat. Why no water dance? Uh, reason being, water dance not actually sent in from the home city shipment. But if it was, that would be a very good call to go for it. Town centre destroyed from the long-range bombardment attack. Where can villagers gather? Garrison. I think they can garrison in the Kalankas, can't they? But apart from that, there's nowhere to go. Double barracks offence been dropped on the north side. Looking to go into Rodoleros, you'd believe. The Chincharats are moving out, though. And... Most of this navy being cleaned up, and they're not being really repaired underneath the boat, underneath the docks. This is where a second and a third fortified outpost here would have missed. He's just deleted two as well to rebuild them down to the south, but Lucas knows he can defeat both the land and the water. He's honourable in that way. He calls GG when the game's up. GG's been called. We're going to move on to the game number four. And that one is the wrong way round. Oh, dearie dear. Uh, what is it? Oh, not that button there. Uh, player two score, that's okay. Just right click, uh, transform, flip, flip the flip horizontal. There we go, nice one. Cool, great game. I really enjoyed that, and that was a really good control there for me. Um, basically, mixing, I wouldn't say mixing land and water, realistically, it was just the water. But stacking those crucial H1 cards of advanced dock and team coastal defences with the logistician bonus. I mean, in this part of the game, it's only plus extra 100 food for the age up to get to get to the second age. But actually, when you send these age one cards, which you'd, you'd send in the second age at that point anyway, you get extra 400 resources just to really kick your momentum forward. Uh, yeah, it's um, Spanish logistician on the water. Strong, nice and strong. I think I think the build can be tightened up a little bit, um, but I'm just theory crafting here. What? How? How do you beat the Spanish logistician on Patagonia? You got a safe triple trading post route behind your base, all access to these very strong cards. Hmm. Maybe when uh, Patagonia gets put back into the map map pool, could be some strong times for Spain on the quick search ladder. Right, have a quick look at the timeline. Military population looking strong. All resources gathered. Me just taking off. But it's it's really that naval presence, I think, and the pressure that I mean, the Lucas felt that he couldn't do too much. And all these units here were just chimney runners, but getting cleaned up. I wonder where these 50 uh, military populations go. I swear I didn't see too much more than, like, 20 or 30 population from Minimox. I must have missed something, and I apologise for that, but I think it was just Lances running around and Falconets and... Yeah, the howitzer. Two howitzers at the end, I don't know. Felt like most of the action was on the water then. Ah, sc scrap that overlay. It's annoying. I don't like it. No chat from the previous game. Okay. Right. We are back into this tournament series between Minimal and Lucas. Game number four is being played on Grand Chaco, and I'm very excited to see some Dutch being played here from Minimal to the north of the map. Lucas pulling into the southern map in the color yellow plane as the Japanese civilization opening up early consulate. Explorers going north side and bomb side. If players have done their map analysis, they will know that there are two sets of llama spawns around each of the two ponds. So eight llamas, two ponds, two llamas, um, or two llama spawns, two llamas per spawn or per batch. So yeah, Lucas has gone for the north pond, he's gone for the south pond, and he's going to get six llamas really early. He's going to take them home, put them onto Sugar Shrine. Lovely jabbly, job done there for Lucas, and... Oh, oh, you've got to be careful, though. Don't lose him. He's, he's stay in range. That's fine. Uh, he's even got formations on. <laughs> no, there's no formations. It's just, it's just the way they've um, stood in between. But, yeah, really... <gasps> oh, no! <laughs> oh, the envoy's stealing two, two llamas. I'm full of praise for Lucas for being aware of the map. But same for Minimal. He's also aware of the map. And actually steals two llamas. And realistically, that should have been 6-2 to Lucas. Yeah. 
Right, we see a hundred coin treasure guarded by one Jagra from Minimal. Minimal is looking to train 15 villagers in the first ages. Just got one villager to get the rest of the coin, but managing to get 100 coin treasure is immensely strong for the Dutch. So, so strong. Uh, really, really enjoy to see that. And I think in this game, to age with 15 villagers is probably the correct decision because Minimal was focused on getting the llamas instead of focused on treasure gathering to start off with. He'd seen that treasure for a while, but wanted to focus on the llama fight first. 82 food down to the south here by scouted by Lucas. What else has he seen? Any, anything interesting nearby? 100 XP to the north. Has he scouted these two treasures behind his base? Haven't seen this. Oh, that's Mini Mort's perspective. Lucas. Okay, he's seen 40 food here and 40 food. So yeah, he's working on 80 food here, but there's another 80 food behind his base, you could say. And that would be very strong for helping his age up time and villagers in transition. Heavenly Cami, card number one here for Lucas. Yeah, so he scouted with the Orchard Rickshaw. And he scouted a large portion of the map. This Rickshaw has gone... I feel like he's gone down here and around. But scouting all this area, just so much extra information here for the, the Japanese while making good use of the um, f you know, forward spawning berries on the side. Been impressed with this age one here from Lucas. Many just doing standard Dutch things, to be honest. Nothing <laughs> nothing too impressive about by playing Dutch. Uh, <laughs> jokes. Um, possibly I'd eat one of these llamas here just to get that first bank at a really, really nice time. Three minutes. Um, but it's like Minimal was on track to get a 3.30 bank. I think 3.30 would be a good time in here. I, he hasn't seen too many extra treasures he could go for. Um, did, he, did he pick up this treasure or is that complete? That's gone. Yeah, that treasure's gone. I wonder how much coin that was. Could have been quite nice if he picked that up. Okay, so two sugar shrine in base, in base for Lucas. Llamas underneath the town centre. Won't get stolen just this time. Does scout out the front silver mine, the back cherries. And he knows his... And Luke, Mini knows the next two coin mines there for Japan. Back to the Mini Malt. There's the 340, 350. 335 bank time. And if he's going to throw it down, needs to throw it down now. We'll build with three. I'd like to see the fourth here being pulled off onto it. Bit of coin mining, but I think that should be built just in time for the age up. So overall, yep, I'm happy with that age one from Minimal. Just needs to focus sometimes on the these small little details with Dutch, and they just snowball into a much larger. And yeah, okay. pretty good. Hundred food here, really nice. That should get that should allow him to gather the wood crates on the age up with four villagers to then get a very fast bank down on the age up. Yeah, it is a jump with Quartermaster, so that extra food treasure coming in, so he's up to about uh, 300. Uh, gather, 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 build. Bank first, suggesting some sort of mid-map aggression here. Am I expecting to see mid-map racks, racks, house and market? Yeah. Two villagers moving yeah. forward, racks going down. May want to go for one house and queue up two pikemen and wait for the 700 woods shipment to come in to fund more pikemen behind us. Interesting, yeah. Going on the front foot versus a Japanese player. Not often, not, not often I'd open this way. Maybe I'd open 700 wood into 8 pike shipment. But yeah, there's the house, there's the market. The market should be enough to buy wood for the pikemen. Because he needs he, well, he needs the wood for the pikemen. And I think early pikes make more sense than early skirms in this situation. He's training early skirms. It's... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the early scams. I'm not gonna lie, and I, I'm I'm seeing he's going for gangsaw. Why would you go gangsaw? You got two. You got two mines. There's the third mine back here. You got the banks, and you know that because your Hello. coin gathers mine at 0.72 coin per second, you get favourable trades at the market up until around about 140 wood. Uh, the gangsaw, I guess it reduces it down to about maybe 128, 130 from that area. So once you've bought a few times, yes, chopping afterwards is quite nice. But I feel because because the market trading is so clean as well, like you can get 200 wood bought, bang, that's your five pikes. Do I need more pikes? Okay, buy another 200, bang, there's your pikes. While you're training, you know, 
getting all that coin for your uh, skirmisher mass and your villagers behind it. Did that skirmisher ever train? I think I think he cancelled it and and been bought pikes, didn't he? Yeah. So there you go. There's the eight pike shipment. So just basically skipping the 700 wood and playing standard afterwards, trying to get that tempo going down. Scouting around, looking for shrines. There's five shrines on this, but he needs now to get about ten skirms because all Lucas has to do is get a couple of those Yumi archers out on the field. There's five Yumis. He's going to go for a second batch of ten Yumi archers, and five skirmishers can basically hold their own versus five Yumis, but it's not, it's not going to be a um, one-sided trade. But if you don't if you don't protect your pikemen, they're just going to drop down to Yumi archers, and you don't want that in that situation. Envoy beating down a native scout. Go on, Envoy. Do it for the Dutch. Yes. God, the Envoy's been working out the gym, it seems. That was an easy fight for the Envoy. Three skirmishers, first batch of skirms for Minimal, and that's an awkwardly, awkwardly bad batch. I'd like to see Lucas being a bit more offensive, though, with his Yumi archers. He's got nothing to fear. If he's seeing all these pikemen and skirmishers, the only thing he can really fear is a three Hussar shipment, because I don't think he'd really drop down a stable and get production from it while you've invested all this wood on, into pikemen. So I think Lucas is fine just to, if anything, have one of these scouts positioned over here. But back line of this pikemen, checking for reinforcements while focusing on the pike. Envoy gets nuked. The pikeman retreats. And yeah, Lucas' his shrine count, not the greatest at the moment. I mean, he's putting some good pressure on. But a full to sugar shrine at base. One, two shrines available here. Another shrine available in the back line. More sh these to be enshrined up. A lot of shrines available to be built at home, but I like how he's trying to go somewhat aggressive with them. I mean, he's moving forward with his skirmishers, but we've only got eight skirms. He's asking for trouble. He's got a few more. He's only at seven, but he's trying to have a batch. But this is awkward. With Has he got that 700 wooden base? He needs to gather this up and build some banks on it because he's got so much food stacking. It's a bit of an awkward style. Um, Bestiaire is coming out here from the Japanese player, and that should be enough to sh save all of these shrines. Um, these five packs are dead, but... I think Lucas is kind of overcommitted just to the five pikes there. Bestiaris would have done enough to sort this out, and then these guys can go on top side. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is Minimort staying age two? Yeah. Stable coming down. Hussar production behind this. And now, I'm not a big advocate of this card, but this might be a three Hussar moment. He's going to go 600 wood, and that's absolutely fine behind this. He's got. Three banks. Okay, so this is his third bank being thrown down. That's not a lot of banks. Okay, so the wood makes sense here because he needs to get up to four banks. Not five, but four is a is a good number to have. Oh, he's going to Hussar, actually. He's changed it. Mini, Mini, are you listening to me? Are you, like, am I, like, map hacking for you? What's going on? But, yeah, it's 12 skirms versus... How many, how many Yumi's are... Lucas Scott, he's got 10 Yumi's plus the um, crossbowman from Portuguese Consulate. And, uh, it's um, not, not a great trade here for Mini, I think. And the Japan scaling is just going to be stronger. It has to be stronger, doesn't it? Look, market tech, double food, no civil servants just yet. Shrine count is still quite low, but all it takes is what? Oh, uh, well, well, well played, Lucas. Well played. Batch of Nagis. I know Hussars are on the way and being trained, but. Nagis are just, I, uh, just unfairly strong versus skirmishers age two. These guys, Yumi's gonna take down the pikemen. Nagis just gonna trade with whatever they touch. There's, there's just yellow numbers going flying everywhere. Mini's gonna lose his entire force here, and playing non-standard here in this uh, game is not really working out for Mini Molt in his favour. Okay, here comes the pike for the southern flank. There's a couple of musketeers here going to go into hand combat. The five on the field. Reinforcement batch of another batch of naggies. And yeah, these naggy natters. 28 hand attack, 300 HP versus, uh, was it 320 HP, 30. So actually, naggies and hussars are somewhat equal strength in hand combat. Yeah, hussars are only slightly stronger, but Minimalt's lost his entire skirmisher pikeman mass. Lucas can take this trade. He's got more naggies coming behind this. He's going to lose quite a lot of Yumi archers, but the naggies will stay strong. Uh, one skirmisher, one pikeman thinking, do they want a piece of this action? No, they don't. They don't want to get out of the way. Uh, more hussars chasing, but to their death. Um, 
Ah, well, well played, Lucas. What, what a great, what a great uh, Nagi switch. Quite a lot of players would have been tempted just to say, right, I'm, I can win the skirmish of War Age 2 with the Yumi Archers versus Skirms. I'm going to send Coin and Age it behind, but that Nagi switch, man. Uh, fair play. Fair play on that one. Uh, one more Nagi in Q. I don't think he would need to complete the batch. Okay, he, he couldn't because he, couldn't, he tried to and just couldn't get enough coin, but he's sending coin behind us. Has he really sent coin once? Like he sent coin twice, hasn't he? So yeah, he sent uh, four vil, then coin, coin, trying to catch. But ooh, there's a lot of Asars here. A lot of Asars. But another batch of Ashi and Nagi behind this. Um, has enough exports to move on to the Japanese console if he wants to. And then maybe get like one or two clubs um, out moving forward. But you know, when we said that the Nagi has similar stats to the Asars, I think the Nagi base attack 29 is too strong. I think the base attack can be reduced down to like 20. Yeah, 20, well, 28 at least, maybe 26, because they do have multipliers versus skirms and a strong 30% range resist as well. So Nagi is just outclassed the SARS. Enough units here just to deal with it, but both players equally trading. Japan, 170, shrine population, Dutch, three banks, and that's it. No villager shipment from Minimot as well. Eco looking a little bit low for him side. Hello. Yeah, villager techs, hunting dogs, no steel traps just yet. Having to eat the llamas, sending coin to try and get the age up in. No food in deck, so at least he's got all his villagers on the food, sending the coin. Why he's not got much coin behind this. We always see the classic uh, Dutch player or the inexperienced Dutch player sending coin when they have like 400 in bank and when the coin drops, well, they've already got like 800 thanks to the banks and they're like, well, this coin is somewhat useless. Uh, batch of five punks being trained to uh, fend off the naggies. I think Minimox still expecting a naggy play here from Lucas, but what Lucas doing? He's in base. He's not is not aging up. Okay, he's not aging up. He's still training more naggies. Eleven Ashes, five naggies. The Japan Japanese consulate has come in. Two clubmen being trained. You know, that, it, even though it's two clubmen, it's two more than no clubmen, and that really helps. Uh, beautiful shrining position here from Lucas. This is just, this is like Stilton level of cheese. This is this is so annoying for Dutch to deal with. You can see that Minimox is thinking it's quite you know, out the map with pikes here. A couple of hussars down here, all going nice. A couple of clubmen, as soon as they touch one of these hussars, that hussar's essentially dead. So, risky business here for Minimolt, spreading his army thin, trying to deal with the shrines, but I, he feels like he has to. He feels like he has to at this point. One seventy shrine pop. Still more has more hunt in the base to shrine up if Lucas wants to, you know, safely increase his shrine pop. But again, it's just it's just slowing down his um, age two army. Remember, Dutch in the second age they do not have any cavalry ship um, upgrades. Finally, the e Fortress Age has come in for Minimal, Cav Combat, Infantry Combat, all the standard cards, Swiss Pikes in there as well. Um, yeah, I like that deck. Absolutely no problems with it whatsoever. Conf does have Halberdiers, and I, I think Halberdiers do all right versus Japan. I don't, I don't, I've never really trained them versus Japan. I don't think we'll see this game either, especially with an Ashi Nagi composition here from Lucas. Halberdiers, I just don't think quite fits the agenda. Nice uh, movement of the Ashes. We'll get a couple of shots onto the Hussars. Uh, one Hussar goes down, but a lot of these Hussars are pretty much staring at Death's doorway as a result. Oh, does Lucas spot this with the um, Age Up vision? He does not. He kind of does. If he if he looked, if he properly looked, he can. A uh, big raid of Minimox just going straight into Dutch base, and uh, Japan base. Not often can you raid Japan like this, but uh, Minimox rolling the dice, trying his luck, and actually striking quite lucky. Yeah, sentries here. Another batch of hussars coming in. Villagers from this trait, which has to get into the town center. How come the daimyo? That's not going to do that great versus mass hussar. In the meantime, Lucas is pushing forward. Still age two and not looking to age up behind us. Actually, we've got game on our hands. This is starting to come more and closer as, as the game goes on. Lucas heading the score, but I'm feeling Minimort's position and momentum after that. You know, big catch in the base. A couple of stars do get out, but. 
wait, where did all the hussars go? I swear, I swear there was nine hussars there, and there was only like five naggies and one daimyo. That was a fight I think could have won. Those uh, sentries must have put in a lot of work. With the seven times by four multiply onto those units. Front base is down from minimal, so barracks and stable gone down. Artillery foundry here with three, f four. <laughs> Ooh, I'm not. This is this is risky. I'm not feeling the four falconets here. Not enough Reuters here, and Ashes can go stagger mode. Nagis can just Z move. But it's also it's on it's on it's on minimal to cross the map with the slow artillery. So he's across the minimap. He's on a timer. He's invested so much into his artillery. He needs to make the return happen. Lucas actually aging now. It looks like he's aging up with the golden pavilion behind this. So we can get some new archers. More importantly, get his veteran Nagi, veteran Ashi. Ooh, we've got Yabba Sams in deck as well. The Yabba Sami deck behind this. Four Yabba Sams. That's 20% attack on Yabba Sams. And this is just a one act extra oh my sh oh my god so this is okay this is 20 percent attack and multiply this is just 20 percent attack this is 20 10 attack and multiply that's a strong card that's a very strong card i was checking if he had naggy hp which he does but in your rush is also an incredible card i mean i think people need to just include that card in all decks regardless if they had the full yabba sam card or not and actually given how expensive yabba sams are a full shipment of them it's like the Sioux Rifle Riders. It's um, yeah, they're very expensive cavalry, but I think, I think if Lucas sends them, he can, he he will get the value from them. Definitely get the value out of them. First card about to come in. What would it be? <laughs> I'm hyping all this action up at Yabba Sam's. He's going to weigh the bow. Um, 18 Yumi archers. He needs to get his um, vet Yumi. Vet Yumi coming in now. Still waiting for Vet and Nagi to actually get it on this wood. But oh, he, he now sees he now sees the army approaching. Lucas will be under siege here from Dutch forces. Dutch Falconets. Will the way the bow would still be useful? Can they outrange that much and hide behind? I feel I feel that he's seen this. I think Lucas is thinking just a cav could be a big cleanup here. A lot of cav here. Nagi it's Nagi um combat not on the way yet. <laughs> Oh no, Yumi's can't go out much more forward. Sacrifice the Tushua Shrine, sacrifice the town centre. You need to position your forces behind. I think if Nag is pivot behind, this has got cleanup written all over it. Uh, oh, beautiful raid topside. Two Nag has been annoying. Uh, we'll get punched down though, but certainly we'll pick up another bill. Having to call five Asars to defend topside. F fight happened yet? Not just yet. The way the bow did come in, so so a card could have come in if he wanted to, but out come five Yabba Sams straight on, not being picked up. One on Falconet going down, second Falconet about to be targeted down. Yabba Sams working, Yumi Archers turn on onto the veteran Reuters. The Reuters are still sieging the constant the attack move, having to deal with the raid, a bit of multitasking everywhere. The another third Falconet down, and we now have um, Nagi Nathariz not actually upgraded to the veteran because he prioritized the Yabba Sam training, but the next. Falconet goes down, and the Yumi Archers, no answers for. The Nagis could pull back if they want to, but they are snaring and actually keeping the clubs somewhat interested underneath. But that was, yeah, I, f I feared a cleanup was on the cards, and it basically was a cleanup. Well, near enough was. The shrines are still shrining on the side. The, the um, You can see Minis try his hardest to keep the shrine count down, but Japan's just been out on the map. 180 shrine pop. Still more shrine population available to go. Town center being rebuilt. Could drop down another two town centers for all I care. Um, yeah, could could go up, to get another four shrines. He's up to 16 shrines yet. Japan, train more clubs. Need more Yumi's. Yabasam's been trained. Is Nagi been upgraded? Well, he's only got two now. So doesn't need to upgrade them, but he's just going to go Yabasam's. And this is when you send your Yabasam attack card because you're starting to mass them behind here. 10 Yabasams on the field already. Yeah, this has got a Yabasam attack written on it. Or he could he could do intervention for a big batch of clubmen. Okay, villagers scouted. No great coats for Minimal. Once again, Minimal's not a man for great coats. He he likes his summer wear, doesn't like the thick uh, great coats and the protection it offers. And certainly lost quite a few villagers this series as a result of it. Yumi Archer's going, thank you very much. I will take this. 
please. Uh, that villager living with the skin of a teeth. There are enough Reuters to push back the two Nagis, but Reuters, unfortunately, uh, are woefully bad versus disciplined Yabasams and Yumi Archers. He's going to go in for the fight. He knows he can't win, and there's just plus units everywhere. This is this is demolishment. Yeah, he went for the Falconets. This is nice, but once the Falconets turn, yeah, you've got just got enough units here to deal with. This is just the this is just the getting away with the all-in push there from Mini, holding on, sending units behind. 190 Shrine Pop. How about his siege behind? He take did no, I think they left even left that shrine, but Musketeers chasing. Musketeers not that big in this fight. Okay, Yapsam's trying to go onto the Falconets, but the actual Falcon's not really doing too much damage here if the, if the Yumi Archers are well behind. I think Yabasam's will see some targets they want to trade off. Falconet can go get, get a double kill versus two expensive units, so it's not too bad. But the Reuters can't touch much, and the GG has been called. So Lucas taking down Minimalt here. 3 to 1. Well played. Oh, not, not that scoreboard. Let's get, that. Let's get it right this time. Three to one. Well played to uh, Lucas uh, in particular. Uh, the minimal game on Dakar was very juicy to see, um, but this last game, just Lucas being all around. I think, I think the strategy for minimal hasn't quite worked. I think um, seven hundred wood opening is still going to be the standard play. Seven hundred wood with the bank, barracks, market, house, and then the market can be used here for. Um, buy in some wood for five pikes, send eight pikes behind, and train five skirms early. So you still get like an early ish 13 pike. But although the shrines have been shrines have been placed on both sides, the pikes were always split up. Didn't get enough damage down on each of the shrines, and um, Numi archers were enough to kind of repel H2. The Nagi play from Lucas was very nice, and once he's used up his Nagi kind of um, units, Minimalt had trained the Reuters to do the Naginatas, but Lucas kind of came in and swapped out of the blue into Yabosam archers to take down the Falconets, the Hussars, and kind of body block the Reuters and, and allow the disciplined Jumis with their Yumi Archer card, what are they call the Way of the Bow. So that's the Way of the Bow, it's a little bit of HP as well, 15%, and disciplined tech and Japan and Golden Pavilion. Yeah, so a real strong army, Yabosams and Yumi Archers. Do you remember when Zoe said, I'm going to increase Yabasam attack from 8 to 9 because no one used them? Well, he brought them back down to 8 and people are still using them. So I guess the Zoe uh, managed to change Japan meta somewhat in the future. But these double cards here, Yabasam attack, Inyo, Rush, and yeah, real strong, real strong. Not needed this game, but options were there for Lucas.